coming up on Theater Talk. Who was your favorite movie star? I fell on, on, uh, on his face or her face. Uh, Scarlett uh, Johansson. Oh, Katna kept... Hutchins. <laughs> and she was pigeon toed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get over it. You're stay, Maggie the Cat and you're pigeon toed. <laughs> and the other thing. Nobody wants to f you. <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theatre Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. So, Michael, it's that time of year that we have the critics come in and tell us what's going on. Yes, we've come to the end of another Broadway season, so we've invited our friends to get out there, buzz saws and hack away at the stuff that isn't good, but also praise the stuff we've liked this season. We are joined by a very distinguished <laughs> panel of <laughs> critics tonight. Our good friend Peter Marks from the Washington Post is here. Welcome back, Peter. Lovely to be here. Uh, our, our other good friend, Ben Brantley of the New York Times. Good to see you again. Hello. Welcome, Ben. And uh, a new critic on the scene, and I must say, uh, not since <laughs> Ben Brantley, Walter Kerr, George D Jean Nathan has a critic written with such insight into the theater. <laughs> we are joined tonight by Miss Joan Rivers of the Beverly Hills Courier. Yes. Welcome to the Small New York Times. Small but very mighty. <laughs> well, Joan, where did you study drama criticism? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think of myself as a citizen journalist. I just yeah. love, I love, I see everything, I go to everything, I love the theater, I would rather watch theater than anything in the world. And so they finally said to me, write about it. <laughs> so you are the voice of the people. These guys are the voice of the elite critic types. I am the voice of the, the one that puts the money down. No one gives me a free ticket. Oh, you and pay. I, I pay. The voice of the people is at the Beverly Hills Courier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. The voice of my people. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you, you pay for your tickets. <laughs> All right, Joan. Let's uh, let's let's start with you. Um, Tom Hanks has just opened in a play called yeah. Lucky Guy, Lucky the guy. last play that Nora Ephron wrote before she died. And she uh, should have lasted a little longer. Absolutely. She was a friend of yours. No, also. because she should have rewritten. Right. <laughs> 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 no. Yes, she was a friend. I adored her. Yes, all right. Very smart. But you have some issues with this play. I, issues with, not with him. He's brilliant, and we have all forgotten that he comes, he started as a Shakespearean actor. Right. right. Look who I'm talking to, mm -hmm. like these two know everything. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, he did three years of Shakespeare in Cleveland before he even came, you know, east. So I think he's wonderful. I think the play, uh, it was shallow. Do you know, it didn't get deep. It didn't really say anything. You didn't care when he won the Pulitzer Prize because it didn't build. Right. We should but say I'm, it's a play about uh, Mike McAlary, oh, the old yes. uh, tabloid columnist, and Tom Hanks plays Mike McAlary, who worked for The Post and The Daily News in the 80s and 90s. And nothing's really dramatized. It's all described in the third person. I mean, the, the Luima uh, interview, the interview with Abner Luima that got him the Pulitzer, you want that to be a, a, an extended scene. You want to see how this guy can interview. We're not given that. Mm -hmm. It's all described and as if it awake, which I is don't know how what it is. This play will never be done again. It will be just done for a Broadway right. audience with Tom Hanks as the star because it doesn't have any context for the rest of the world, mm -hmm. really. And it's not explained to the rest of the world why. And I even think Hanks, while wonderful to see him on Broadway, is He's a charming guy in a charmless role. He's it too nice, really, and he starts off, really, and he really does start off being <laughs> abrasive and aggressive. <laughs> but to see Tom Hanks go on a stage mm. against amazing Broadway actors, true, and hold, hold his, his own, own. He does. I think totally, that's totally, and is so charismatic. He well, did. it's also and a and the audience fast. is there for the him. The audience loved Nora. The audience loves Tom Hanks, and so they're feeding and all let's say, that warmth. Also, just to just yeah. to defend the play a little bit, I, I do feel that it captures. Uh, since we're all newspaper people here, it does capture the last heyday of newspapers when they really ran this town. When you had a front page story on the Post or the right. Daily News, you dominated the news cycle for 24 hours. And now, pe and people smoke. The I actually scoops. remember smoke. I love the smoke machine. I, That's oh, my favorite oh. thing. What was the smoke, the smoke machine? Well, oh, I was, I people was at, smoking in the in the yeah. yeah. I where, was where at they, news day when this was all when a lot of this was going on. So I mean, I those guys, those names are. It was very strange for me to see Hap Hairston was played by Clark editor. Uh, was my right. editor. Uh, in my tryout for Newsday yeah. uh, on Long Island. I mean, that's so. I mean, these and was people he were the cuddly person we see on Absolutely stage? not. <laughs> it was the opposite. Just as maybe you know, other characters being played on Broadway. Did it, did it make you nostalgic for New York of that era? It made me so nostalgic that I had never had the fun of being in a newsroom. Mm. And again, it brings back all those old Russell Russell movies. Oh yeah. yeah. All those you know, old front page. Get the get right. the story. But I think Tom 
thanks. God bless him. Right. He's doing such it. a full actor and a full performance and extending. He didn't just walk in and walk out. Six well, and days. especially in the year when right. so many right. movie stars fell on their faces. It was, and should have. <laughs> and should have. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Who, who, was your, who was your favorite movie star fell on, 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 uh, on his face or her face this year? Um, well, Katie Holmes. Uh, <laughs> although, actually, that wasn't a disgrace. I mean, you know, for her, it wasn't a disgraceful performance. She just ate. Jessica Chastain <laughs> was like, you know, this block of wood walks in the out. Heiress. And uh, in the heiress. And, and, you know, you keep waiting for... And Either she would do these sort of exaggerated mimes, like, you know, she'd curtsy shyly and it would be like <laughs> she was in a charades. Or she'd pinch uh, her face to be ugly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Oh, Cat in a hot to, <laughs> And she was pigeon toed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get over it. You're standing, Maggie the cat, and you're pigeon toed. Well, and the other thing. Nobody wants to. You. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is Maggie was supposed to be from the right side of the tracks, and she talked like Hattie McDaniel and Gomez. <laughs> <laughs> I did not understand yeah. that. Yeah. I actually yeah. think Scarlett had an idea for the part. I think if she'd had the right she director, misdirected. She did with it was ruined by that that overrated Rob oh. Ashford, who I've been, we've been sold a pig in a poke with that guy. I'm telling. Well, now, why was he given it? Because of Streetcar in London was that the? Yeah, idea? because of yeah, Streetcar. Very right. popular. Right. And also remember, he's got Creative Arts Artists Agency CA behind him, and they're a powerhouse agency, and they're really pushing package. Yes, and package. Yeah, we're hearing that. Yeah. Let's go and, and look at, at poor Truman Capote, who I'm glad he's dead. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, oh, Tiffany's. oh, that was painful. It was so oh, sad. Oh, and yeah. I kept saying, "Who is she?" Because I had never seen right Game uh, of Thrones. Game, right. Never seen Game of Thrones. And they said, "No, no, she's a huge star. She's a huge star." And I felt so sorry for her. Mm. No, I said, this little what spot girl. Sorry, who yeah. is she? <laughs> Amelia Clark. Yeah, Amelia, Amelia Clark. Clark right. And she's wonderful <laughs> in Game of Thrones, but. What are you doing? <laughs> but, but she plays a dragon hatcher in Game of Thrones. I mean, she actually breeds dragons. It's. But I, that, you saw none of that fire. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been happy to see that on Although stage. I did notice some scales, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I but, like uh, that Truma Capote was straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, he was, no, they did make him gay, yeah, sort of. Remember when he was sort eyeing of. the, um, yeah. I mean, better than George Prepard. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of gay, the Nance uh, is uh, with with the wonderful Nathan Lane playing um, uh, an old style, s sort of swishy, second uh, rate character actor type. In second banana burlesque. Burlesque, burlesque. burlesque exactly right. right. Yeah. Um, uh, ben, what'd you think of the Nance? Uh, Douglas I, Carter Bean. I, I liked his performance. Uh, I think he was betrayed by the script. Uh, it starts off rather encouragingly with a pickup scene at the laundromat, which gives you a sense of that whole furtive underworld in New York at that time. The automat. It's the automat. Oh, did I say laundromat? Oh, laundromat, which I oh, laundromat was my experience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, and then it, he turns into a mouthpiece. He starts saying all these things that I don't think the character would say, standing up for himself, making speeches on stage in court. And that didn't track for me. And I also thought it took on all these sort of 1930s movie cliches at the end. The other thing is the guy he was with was way too good to be true. And, and he dumped him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what lost me. If yeah, you're not I know. madly in love with you, you go, yeah. you know, get away from you, great big fabulous looking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> did we believe also, did we believe that after he's beaten up, that he still believes in this Republican administration. I didn't think it And yet tracked. he denounces it in the scene before. It, it doesn't it, track. It's whiplash. Listen, it's a perfectly good yeah. idea, I think, the ironies or the paradoxes of, a, of having a conservative, gay, semi-closeted actor in the 30s. That's yeah. a really interesting idea. But it's the playwright's job to make us understand why this behavior works. It, I don't think, I think that was a fault of the playwright. And uh, what he'd he be is, I mean, even in the first scene, he says, uh, a gay man doing effeminacy is like uh, a Negro doing blackface. Would he have had the insight to do that? And would he continue to do it if he did? I just and I he was so courageous. Those moments. He was. Yeah. A, he was yeah. like. A, he was a. He was a trailblazer at the same time that he was a reactionary. Yeah. It didn't really make. sense. So the player it seems confused about what he's trying to. Also, do. what I didn't like about it was, uh, he lives this dreary life <laughs> off stage. Right. And he's fighting for stage. Stage should be magical. Right. You know, you should see the magic of the stage mm. when he goes on it. Mm. And instead, it's his dreary right. apartment. Yeah, yeah, why, yeah, yeah. why get dressed and go? <laughs> you know, a dreary, <laughs> right. dreary. One dreary Although dreary. I did like the way he would come to life in the vaudeville scenes. It was the only time he seemed happy, the character. And those yes. are real, happy. right? Those were yeah. real scenes. Oh, yeah. Those were actually yeah. taken from. Because it was from... showing the tired world of burlesque. That was well, right. I got that right. 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 Yeah. right. Yeah. But <laughs> I saw the you tired some... life of uh, the tired world of decorating. So I just. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked his fantasy world to be the. L I go on a stage. Mm. I don't care what the stage is. I'm so happy to be there. It is glitter for me. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. I did love the, the uh, staging of it, that you could see the acting, and they still were working behind them. I thought that was... Yes. Really oh, yeah, no, the staging was... And I liked, I liked the actual burlesque numbers by mm-hmm. the strippers, too. Yes. Yeah. I thought that came closer, certainly, than Gypsy. And you like, you, you like Nathan, though. Do you think Nathan... I think he is in the great tradition. I thought he was... You know, I it's thought the he Burt Law tradition. Right. It's the zero. Mm. Zero style. Yeah. He's one of the great... Uh, the only one really oh, left. Up only in one. That, in that yeah, spot. and also he's unique too because he's what he's one of the few real stage stars who actually sells tickets right. just by being right. a stage star. A- a- Adam's family would never have. Oh God, no! Ooh, yeah. It's true. He's got a, a real Is following. Is the dance doing well? Yes. Um, I hope so. Yeah, they just extended it. They just extended. And it. they, yes, they should. It. As a New Yorker, it was fascinating to know that kind of politics were going on. I had no idea that LaGuardia closed these things down. Mm, yeah. you know. Closed down all the gays. All Especially the after gay. we'd seen LaGuardia at Encores, which was this yeah. ideographic portrait of him. So what a wonderful little guy. Yeah. So why yeah. tack on this fantasy relationship to this very gritty story to give him this lover who he never would have had? I well, mean, I think partly the... it was to get him out of the bathtub in that second scene. <laughs> <laughs> right, now you yes, just, yes. Right, your critics, why that was so gratuitous. The I nudity? Don't, oh, the nudity? The oh, and Breakfast at Tiffany's, and too. Breakfast I've seen at more Tiffany's. torsos right. and below, I mean, this season than ever. <laughs> oh, how about that guy in a uh, Picnic? Oh! <laughs> well, that was the star of the show. <laughs> that, the the chest, that was so all there. That one, the guy. <laughs> but let's not forget Fiona Shaw, who took her clothes oh, off in uh, the Testament of Mary and bathed. Yes, she did. Well, that was, you know, a sacred ablution, I guess, a baptismal font or something. But I had really a hard time justifying that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's be positive. Andrea Martin, look at how great her body oh looks. My oh, God. Wow. oh, wow. Pippen. Andrea Martin as the old lady in Pippin. Six years old. Oh. How great does she look? Incredible. Like? She was my favorite thing in it. I Incredible. Yeah. I, lo- I love yeah. Pippin. Did you? She, she, I know you didn't like it. Oh, you can fight this out. Did you, I you loved, loved Pippin? It. it was Why? fun. It's modern. It's the great circus tradition of the theater. We go back to Dumbo. We go back to, to Mike. No, but all the. It's been around forever. But they I kept all the world. Three, they kept all three rings going at once. It was kind of hard to know what to focus on. Good. The story. <laughs> <laughs> the more distractions, the better. Yeah. Right, right. But I, I, I think think too, li- literal, too linearly, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm with Ben that you, you you had chocolate sauce and barbecue sauce right, and right. people had hula hoops on their legs and. And I thought, well, do we need all this if the musical is really solid? And it's not solid. Stylings but, and the dancing of Bob Fosse. Yes, and the original the production, I went back and looked oh, at the films of it. It was magical that, I mean, the show was as shallow as ever. Mm-hmm. But he really made it so seductive. And yeah. Ben Vereen was a charming uh, storyteller. He was, you know, a little duplicitous and all that. It reminded me, yeah. it reminded me that we're, we've <clears throat> lost the, the, the men and women who can make mm-hmm. big shows, who could do on a big stage those great uh, Broadway feeling numbers, they, they, that's gone. Yeah, but this, you, you mean, this, you mean so Bob, today Bob Fosse, Michael Fosse, Bennett, Michael Tommy Toon? Now you've got, the only way you can do this is to have a three-ring circus on the stage. And that's, to bring in certain That's Soleil, the only yeah. thing that's right. big. Um, it, it, Patina Miller, bless her heart. She's great. You didn't like it. I didn't no. at all because it was Loved so... It. <laughs> it was so plastic. It, it felt like there was yeah, no mechanical. person there. I thought it was Ben robotic, Vereen, yeah. you felt... You wanted to get to know this guy. You were happy to have him around. And you felt, and I felt the was, opposite he with her. Talking about bloodshed and all that, he wasn't just, you know, the avatar of evil, the conscience of history. He was feeling kind of weird about it at the same yes. time as he was performing. So there was a human element, which I didn't get with Patina Miller. Well, all. you don't believe her when she gets angry right. suddenly and right. is telling them to stop doing this stuff. I mean, it didn't. It oh, didn't she crack. was the other one I liked, though, was the girl, Rachel Bay. Ray yeah. Jones. Yes. I thought she was lovely. She was dark. How's that for a critical <laughs> phrase? The dark. avatar of history. Do you like that in Beverly Hills? I'm, I'm going to a dinner party tonight. I'm pulling that out so <laughs> fast. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pippin was great. It was exciting. It was fun. And it's modern, you know. And You're in the majority, by the way. You are. Yeah, I had a good time. I had, People I had, love I had, it. I think it's been a great year for musicals, in spite of the fact that the great American songbook musical is gone. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Right. What do you? Well, let me ask you, what do you think of Stephen Schwartz's score for Pippin? Do you like that music, Joan? Uh, at least it had two songs that I could. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I had two songs. Oh, yeah. that, We've got magic yeah. to do. It does have and that ear. Time to start quality, living. So you, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, all, you know, for days just after, no I wanted to all? shoot, you know, yeah. the entire cast because it's going, oh, it's time to start. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you, you guys didn't sing. I mean, I defy you. You walk out of Matilda. What am I I can. Yeah, you know, f- <laughs> teachers. I can. <laughs> no, no, no. I can. I, can I love that. Matilda. Uh, Dawn yeah, Matilda. Yeah. But, he, but she's saying the score. She's saying it's not. Oh, no, but I can do the score. 
Do you can? Well, no, 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 can. I'm oh. with you. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually found it. All right, we should say Matilda is the musical that you all loved. You gave uh, babes yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, it's in from, from London based on the oh. Roald Dahl. And it's pretty close to perfection. Story. But yeah. Revolting Children is a wonderful song. I agree. Uh, doesn't that so is, so, so is I'm just not a, humming it. So it's oh. just a little bit naughty. Sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty. Well, the one I like is When I Grow Up. Oh, when they do yes. that's, love, that's, that's a love that's I feel like great. Mummy always said, I'm, I'm a miracle. miracle. I love I like that. I take thing. it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Jerome Kern. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> but you like the show. I adored yeah. the show. I thought it was smart. And the staging is, is oh, so staging. imaginative. And everything's of a piece. The way they use those letters, and it becomes oh. about letters, making sentences, Didn't telling you like stories. It, I loved it. No, I loved yeah. it. I saw it in London. Yeah. And thought it was I, even, it's even better here. And we should I agree. Say, uh, I thought the direction by Matthew Warches and and the choreography by Peter Ron Darling. Darling. Uh, oh, Peter, Peter Darling. Darling, who is the the, the one of the head and shoulders above any American choreographer. Well, what he did with Billy Elliot, too. And that he can work with children This is better. Like this is and, way better yeah. than Billy Elliot. Yeah, I agree. children that have something to say. Yeah. I'm so sick of yes. Annie. <laughs> 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 well, what did I did you see that she did. gave it the back of her hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you should have played Miss Hannigan. And they wanted me to. They they it, I couldn't really? I couldn't put it into my schedule. I would have loved to have done Miss Hannigan because I would have really shown those kids a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was uh, uh, um, Tom Tom Meehan who wrote Annie. I was talking to him the other day, and he he said, you know. Uh, Katie Finneran was fine, and there's somebody else going in now. I forgot. Jane, Jane Lynch. Lynch. Jane Lynch. Jane he Lynch said, would be wonderful. Yeah, but he, could be good. He said, but you know, Dorothy was and always will be the best because yes. Dorothy Loudon in real life hated children. Oh, oh no, that was a wonderful performance. Yeah. I, I, yes. you Did you see that, that performance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Andrea McCardle told me, um, you know, little eight-year-old Andrea McCardle on the table reading. Yeah, like 50. Yeah, yeah well, yes. <laughs> the table reading of Annie, <laughs> everything was going fine and all this, and at the break, uh, Dorothy went over to her and she said, listen to me, kid. <laughs> If you make one move on a laugh line of mine, you won't live to the curtain call. Oh, God. <laughs> now that yeah. is a Miss Hannigan. <laughs> but Matilda is the hands, I mean, it's hands down the best. I mean, it's Tony. And I admire it because it, pro it preserved the grotesqueness, the real nastiness of, 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 of Dahl. It didn't blend yeah. it down oh, and, for Broadway. And the fearfulness of childhood. It really, it's, it's the children's revolution. Yes. Exactly. The one song that I right. love is, we're going to grow up and we're going to be able to get you back. It's not like yeah. Peter Pan. <laughs> right, like, exactly. You don't want to grow up. <laughs> And not only that, but it was reflected in the choreography. Those kids were doing dynamic ah, moves. Oh, yeah. Those they look strong. Those well, kids. the revolting uh, children number is a little spring awakening when they. Yes. Say, you know, it, it, since you couldn't do Miss Hannigan when the wonderful Bertie Carvel leaves, oh, you could play Trunch. Oh, you could play oh, Miss yes. Trunchbull. No, no, rough, tough, mean guy. Rosie O'Donnell. It, it's so <laughs> She'd be brilliant. Yeah. But he was subtle. Do you know? Do you know how we do is those little those hands, the hands, those hands, the, the hand finger. up. It was a fascist on the verge of a nervous break. And that bun. <laughs> I love the little bun. Oh, the yeah. bun. Yeah, the bun. It's so nasty. They have the one scene where he picks the girl up by oh, the pigtails, oh ah! spins her around, and throws and her away. And it's what kids want, and it's what adults want too. At the same time, it's very rare you get a show right. that can do both so brilliant. Yeah, but, but let us speak also of kinky boots. Everybody say yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the well, first act of Kinky Boots. Yes, I wasn't it's there. ecstatic. Yeah. You're ecstatic after the first and act. And it's such a good a little score, bit of a lift. I think, that Cindy Lauper. By Cindy Lauper, who's yeah. a newcomer yeah. to Who Broadway. sings that stuff? <laughs> oh, you I did. love Cindy, but yeah. that's... You, don't, you didn't like her score either? I love the score, but it's not... I'm from the... Look at my age. I'm right. from... You know, I want to sing Some Enchanted Evening. I right. want to walk Rogers out... Rogers and Hammerstein. You know, Rogers and Hammerstein, I want a little bit of Stephen Sondheim before he got mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I, I will I, never write another song they can sing each other forever. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> no you, more Send of the Clowns. <laughs> that's it? Send of the Clowns? Period? <laughs> Joan, I mean, you are a, a, a fashion commentator. What do you think of the boots themselves? I thought they were boots. fabulous. <laughs> Fab I thought the whole... The production was wonderful. I, I thought when it. they were dancing on, on the, the treadmill. Yes, oh right. no, the first on the assembly line. The assembly line's after. brilliant. Assembly line. Really loved. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah. there were and some performances. There, there were some real performances. The girl, uh, uh, Anna Lee Ashford. Yes, Anna Lee Ashford. Ashford. Wonderful girl number she got. Oh, wonderful. But I've been here before. Have I come back for more? Another chapter in the history of wrong guys. She does Cindy Lauper there. Yeah. Really, and she sort of channels Cindy Lauper's kind of and tough And Stark girl. Sands, who plays the, uh, the I very like good Sands. performance, right? Which yeah. could have been bland, nothing, right? Yeah. He really does. And it was nominated for a Tony. Play. You know what's great about this? 
big shows, a lot of actors working. Right, right. Yes, that's right. And that's great. Yeah. I, um, I hate one woman shows. We're gonna, we gotta wrap. No, I, I'm always <laughs> in one woman. I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, that's yours. The Sally, Ma yeah, yeah. Sally Marsh one woman show that you're you did. damn right, Tony nomination. Yes. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And we're bringing it back. You are, really? Yeah. Ooh, We're doing a pop-up theater. But Bette Midler, I understand, is playing Sally. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we must mention Bette Midler because I yes. enjoyed um, I'll Eat You Last, the play about the right. Hollywood Who agent Sue Mengers. I love gossip, don't you? It's like mother's milk to me. But the big news here in New York was that the play and Bette Midler herself were snubbed by the Tony Awards. Do you think that was a Tony-worthy performance, Peter? I did. I think that uh, she she really sells that show. It's a, it's as slight as as a as a episode of Extra. Yeah. But it's, but no, it's, slider, I think. you know, but, but on the other hand, she inhabits, she fills the place. Yeah. I don't mean just with the seats, but yeah. she fills her with the personality. Without with, moving. She barely without moves. Without no, getting off the... No, and she delivers those lines. I mean, you know, killer delivery. They should I have given her a nomination. Yeah, I didn't sakes. believe it, that she was someone else until the very end. And then I saw a transformation. When she's worried, when she's afraid she's going to lose me. it all, yeah. then suddenly I didn't see Bette. Do you know Bette Midler over the... I know Bette forever. I wrote the original, sco uh, original <clears throat> screenplay of The Rose. Oh, wow. and no, she I didn't was realize that. One. I didn't know oh, you that. sure with George yeah. Firth? We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That. George is my very good. But you haven't had a chance to see Bet yet. I did not see it yet because I love Bet and I despise Sue Mengus. You did really. I, she was a tough, mean, hard, just. She was a great agent. Right. <laughs> that she was not this warm, wonderful right. pussycat. And all she, the sentimentality came later, not during her career. So afterwards. She was sort of became sort of the guru of yes. wherever her house All the mean was. things yeah. she said right. then right. after she well, died became me, funny and charming right. rather than just mean. Oh, but, she could make or she could kill you. She could walk past her mother who was screaming, water, water, and she would step <laughs> right over <laughs> and give it to Streisand. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever try to represent you? Yes, for a minute and a half when I wrote a movie called The Girl Most Likely To. She was the first one on the phone. Courted me for about three days and then uh, realized, ugh, it's just a television movie and never spoke to me again. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But you should go to see it. Uh, for, for I'd Bet, like I to think. see because I love Bet. And mm. again, I'm thrilled that people that should perform come back to Broadway. And Bet is. It's only taken her 35 years, but she's back. But she's a live performer. But would do, you like to do, see her do like Hello Dolly? Yes. That would In be a hot fabulous, second. Yeah. yeah, well, the Niederlanders. Wouldn't Rose. it sell like crazy? Yeah. yeah. The Niederlanders have been after her to do Hello Dolly for a And she could bring uh, something sell it like, different. Because yeah, it would be it, completely yeah. different. And right. it's, it, I, I just saw it in Washington, actually. And it's, it's, a, it's a tight show. It really actually is a lot better than your sort of memory mm. of the schlockiness of the show. And it's got a score that you probably like, Jerry Herman. Yes. One of the yeah. ones I'm, that you love from the Golden I'm Age. I'm sorry. I, I want to hear an overture. <laughs> we don't need more. Yep. And I want to walk out and hear the orchestra playing behind me. Mm. Yeah. I, that was all part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got to wrap it up. But since in the good, in the great tradition, the grand tradition of drama critics, Joan drinks. Do you what? Uh, do, yeah. <laughs> do you drink before the play, or are you very? I drink during. And I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the cups they give you. <laughs> no, no, sippy cups are no good. We no. brought a few other glasses, gentlemen. If you'd like to join oh, oh, of so course, your fellow sweet. drama critic. Wow. Absolutely. Who I think I must say has done an excellent job today I agree. too. I mean, tremendous insights, Joan. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, and us. it's not even water this time. This is fantastic. <laughs> no, this is this is the real thing. This is the real thing, you know. But all critics back in the day, they all used to drink. Right. I mean, they were famous drinkers. R Ripple? What? What is Ripple wine? Ripple. <laughs> 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 I do. It's a good do you year. ever walk out on a play? Do you ever say this is so bad? No, no, we can't. Because you don't know. Oh, if you walked out, my God. No, I could, you just can't. No, I know. Yeah. I always wonder. Also, I'm do you, always... you you don't walk out. Oh, I can't. I will sit no. to the that's end. Right, that's right. Yeah. I will right. sit to the end. I have a a, fr a friend critic who left a play called Epidog uh, <laughs> because the lights went down, and he went home, and they called him at home and said. You missed the second act. He thought it was over. He had no <laughs> idea. It was so boring. It was terrible. Uh, all right, cheers, yeah, Joan. Cheers. Well, welcome to the New York Drama Critics. Thank, thank you. And before we go, can I ask you guys just one question? I'd be very curious to know the. So we just get a little sense of, of, of your histories. The first play or musical you saw as a kid that made you fall in love with the theater, because everyone thinks critics are just mean, 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 but mm -hmm. in fact, I think you all love the theater. Can you tell us, Ben, the first thing you saw that you thought, I want to be a part of this world somehow, some way? Well, I mean, the first saw, show I saw that made me fall in love was the college production of Bye Bye Birdie when I was five or six years old. Mm. But the first Broadway show I ever saw when I was 15 was Stephen Sondheim's Follies, the original <gasps> production. And after that, it was, I'm going to get here. I'm going to get mm -hmm. here, and I'm going to see absolutely everything. Some way.
Oh, yeah. For you, Peter? My mother took me when I was five years old. We lived in New Jersey to The Sound of Music with Mary Martin. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was the first thing I ever saw, and I was hooked. Yeah. You knew. I knew. Yeah. And for you, John? Well, we don't count kindergarten where I was a pussycat, and I thought, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> my friend... His mother took us to see Where's Charlie? And Ray Bolger, oh, wow. God bless him, would take the children backstage and give them a tour of the theater wow. in a matinee. And I stepped on that stage, and I knew I'm in the temple. Uh, yeah, oh, it is a temple. Great. Once in love yeah. with Amy. Yeah. You, and did you actually see him? He saw him do that famous dance where he kept coming back because the audience wanted yes. more and more yes. and more. Yes. And more I saw and more. him do yes. that actually as the encore for when he was touring in The Happy Time in Charlotte, North Carolina when right. I was 10. Right, 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 yeah. right. All right. Well, listen, thank you very much. Peter Marks from The Washington Post, uh, Ben Brantley from The New York Times, and Joan Rivers from The Beverly Hills Courier. Yes, I small hope they're, but mighty. I hope, <laughs> I hope they're paying you what you deserve for your insights. That's the trouble they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Corey and Bob Donnelly Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you and good night.